Good day to you. Hope you're having a wonderful day. We've been reading in the book of Leviticus. Last time we read Leviticus chapter 25, which was primarily about the year of Jubilee. Now we're ready to read Leviticus chapter 26. I am reading in the Amplified Bible. You shall not make idols for yourselves, nor shall you erect an image, a sacred pillar, or an obelisk, nor shall you place any figured stone in your land, so that you may bow down to it, for I am the Lord your God. Now, I just want to say right off the bat, now some people have taken this to mean you can't have all kinds of little de decorations or knickknacks, but this is really saying you should not have idols that you're going to be bowing down to, you know, that you're going to make your God. Just want to make sure that that's clear, because it's a, kind of a long sentence, and the way I read it, I wanted to make sure it's clear that you're not supposed to make any of these things in order to bow down to it and worship it, okay? All right. You shall keep my Sabbaths and have reverence for my sanctuary. I am the Lord. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and obediently do them, then I will give you rain in its season, and the land will yield her produce, and the trees of the field bear their fruit. And your threshing season will last until grape gathering, and the grape gathering time will last until planting. And you will eat your bread and be filled and live securely in your land." I want you to notice that even in the last chapter and, and in some of the other chapters, a lot of these laws, a lot of these rules that they were meant to obey was so they could live securely in their land. It was for their betterment to keep them safe and to make sure they had plenty enough to eat so that their field and their crops would be successful. I will also grant peace in the land, so that you may lie down, and there will be no one to make you afraid. I will also eliminate harmful animals from the land, and no sword will pass through your land. And you will chase your enemies, and they will fall before you by the sword. Five of you will chase a hundred, and a hundred of you will put ten thousand to flight. Your enemies will fall before you by the sword. For I will turn toward you with favor and regard and make you fruitful and multiply you, and I will establish and confirm my covenant with you. See the promises here, the blessings of obedience that God is, is offering. Now these things in their own way, um, I know we're in a different covenant, but this is still God's heart and will towards us today if we will be obedient and do the right things that we're supposed to do from our hearts, then we will still have this kind of success and safety and security. You will eat the old supply of abundant produce and clear out the old to make room for the new. I will make my dwelling among you, and my soul will not reject nor separate itself from you. I will walk among you and be your God, and you shall be my people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt so that you would not be their slaves. And I broke the bars of your yoke and made you walk upright with heads held high as freemen. Again, notice what God wants. It's the same thing he used to do with Adam and Eve. He would go down and walk with them. He would walk in the garden. I think it says he would walk in the garden in the evening or in the cool of the day. I don't remember exactly how it was phrased. But this is what God wants. I will walk among you and be your God, and you shall be my people. He wants that relationship. He wants to be our, our Heavenly Father. He wants to have, I don't know any other way to say it, other than to, He wants to have that relationship with us, a personal relationship where we spend time with Him, and he can spend time with us. But if you do not obey me and do not obediently do all these commandments, if instead you reject my statutes and if your soul rejects my ordinances so that you will not obediently do all my commandments and in the way break my covenant, I in turn will do this to you. I will appoint over you sudden terror consumption, and fever that will waste away the eyes and cause the soul to languish also. 
and you will sow your seed uselessly, for your enemies will eat what you plant. I will set my face against you, so that you will be struck down before your enemies. Those who hate you will rule over you, and you will flee when no one is pursuing you. If in spite of all this you will not listen to me and be obedient, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. I will break your pride in your power, and I will make your sky like iron, giving no rain and blocking all prayers, and your ground like bronze, hard to plow and yielding no produce. Your strength will be spent uselessly, for your land will not yield its produce, and the trees of the land will not yield their fruit. If then you act with hostility toward me and are unwilling to obey me, I will increase the plague on you seven times in accordance with your sins. I will let loose the wild animals of the field among you, which will bereave you of your children and destroy your livestock, and make you so few in number that your roads will lie deserted and desolate. And if by these things you are not turned to me, but act with hostility against me, then I will also act with hostility against you, and I will strike you seven times for your sins. I will bring a sword on you that will execute vengeance for breaking the covenant. And when you gather together in your cities, I will send pestilence, virulent disease, among you, and you shall be handed over to the enemy. When I break your staff of bread, that is, cut off your supply of food, Ten women will bake your bread in one oven, and they will ration your bread, and you will eat and not be satisfied. Yet if in spite of this you will not attentively listen to me, but act with hostility against me, then I will act with hostility against you in wrath, and I also will punish you seven times for your sins. You will eat the flesh of your sons and the flesh of your daughters. I will destroy your high places devoted to idolatrous worship and cut down your incense altars and heap your dead bodies upon the crushed bodies of your idols. And my soul will detest you with deep and unutterable loathing. I will lay waste your cities as well and will make your sanctuaries desolate and I will not smell your sweet and soothing aromas of offerings by fire. I will make the land desolate, and your enemies who settle in it will be appalled by it. I will scatter you among the nations and draw out the sword of your enemies after you. Your land will become desolate, and your cities will become ruins. So notice that these things are punishments. These are This is a choice here again just like we've read in other places in the Bible, this is a choice between being obedient, following the Lord, and and receiving these blessings, or being disobedient, acting against God, and hating God, and receiving these punishments. When you commit all these sins and do all these negative things in your life, there is a price to be paid. You will pay a price for doing those things. When it says you will, you know, eat your children, basically, is what it's saying. You will eat your children. Well, people kill their children now, right and left, all the time. They, there are, there's abortions like crazy. We abort so many babies every year. You know, um, it's close to, it's not, the last I saw, it was around, it was over 600,000 for 2019. Just in the U.S. Just in the U.S., there were over 600,000 babies murdered in 2019. Imagine that. That is just such a slaughter. It is hard to picture that. That's the type of destruction and the type of thing that God is talking about here. When he says you will eat the flesh of your sons and the flesh of your daughters. Well, these people are basically benefiting. Uh, I'm going to call it this way. They're basically benefiting because well, I can't afford to have that child, so I'm going to kill it. So you're benefiting, you're eating and living off of the profit of killing your child. It's a disgusting idea and thought when, when you look at it the way it really is. 
But also there's a lot more here about heaping your dead bodies upon the crushed bodies of your idols. All these things that people get embroiled in and get tied up in and they, they basically end up worshiping those things and putting those things in front of God and making those things what their life is about. That becomes their idol. And we've seen that a really, I mean, really good examples, easy examples to see are like drugs where people get wrapped up in drugs and that drug is all they care about. That's all they want. And their life is just destroyed by their pursuit of that drug because it's all they want is that high. So that's one easy to see example, but there are a lot of other examples. You can become obsessed with almost anything and drive yourself to where you ignore the other things in your life and you, you run down or destroy the other things in your life. So we need to be very careful about becoming obsessed with things like that and making things, making an idol of something, making it so important that it's above God, above our love of our family and care for others. That's just not a good idea. And here, you know, God is promising these, again, these blessings at the first of the chapter, but then there's these penalties. These penalties will come upon us if we're not following God Because we will make all these wrong decisions, we will do all these bad things, and it will cause us so much trouble in our lives. Following God always makes things better. It's not always easy, though. I'm not going to lie and say, that. oh, it's just so easy. And No, it's not always easy. But it's better. It's a lot better. Those blessings, and, uh, and then again, there's just that peace of mind knowing that you are you know, acting correctly, being moral, and doing the right things. That brings a lot of peace of mind in itself. So let's move on. <clears throat> then the land of Israel will enjoy its Sabbaths as long as it lies desolate. While you are in your enemy's land, then the land will rest and enjoy its Sabbaths. As long as it lies desolate, it will have rest, the rest it did not have on your Sabbaths while you were living on it. As for those who are left of you, I will bring despair, lack of courage, weakness into their hearts in the lands of their enemies. The sound of a scattered leaf will put them to flight, and they will flee as if running from the sword and will fall even when no one is chasing them. They shall stumble over one another as if to escape from a sword when no one is chasing them, and you will have no power to stand before your enemies. You will perish among the nations. The land of your enemies will consume you. Those of you who are left will rot away because of their wickedness in the lands of your enemies. Also, because of the wickedness of their forefathers, they will rot away like them. If they confess their wickedness and the wickedness of their forefathers in their unfaithfulness which they have committed against me, and also in their acting with hostility toward me, I also was acting with hostility toward them and brought them into the land of their enemies. Then, if their uncircumcised, sin-filled hearts are humbled and they accept the punishment for their wickedness, then I will remember my covenant with Jacob and also my covenant with Isaac and also my covenant with Abraham and remember the land. But the land will be abandoned by them, and will enjoy its Sabbaths while it lies desolate without them. And they will accept the punishment for their wickedness, and make amends because they rejected my ordinances, and their soul rejected my statutes. Yet in spite of this, when they are in the land of their enemies, I will not reject them, nor will I so despise them as to destroy them, breaking my covenant with them. For I am the Lord their God. But I will, for their sake, earnestly remember the covenant with their forefathers, whom I have brought out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the nations, that I might be their God. I am the Lord. These are the statutes, ordinances, and laws which the Lord established between himself and the Israelites through Moses at Mount Sinai. So that is the end of chapter 26. You'll notice here, if they will repent, if we repent and return to God, this is the same as in the New Testament in a lot of ways, 
if we return to God, if we repent and acknowledge that we've been wrong, then, of course, he will receive us back and we will be blessed again. It's all a matter of choice for us in what we do. For just a moment, I want us to take a look at a couple of verses here. If you'll notice, verse 21, if then, you know, after the uh, penalties listed out in verses 14 through 20, it says, if then you act with hostility toward me and are unwilling to obey me. And then notice again in verse 23, and if by these things you are not turned to me. And then notice in verse 27, yet if in spite of this you will not attentively listen to me, but act with hostility. In each of these cases, each of these penalties, each of these punishments are to try to get our attention and draw us back to God. They are to show us that this is the wrong way, much as like when you try to teach a child, sometimes you have to, you know, sometimes you have to get a little, uh, a little mad. You have to fuss at them a little bit, or maybe you, you know, you're not trying to hurt them. You're not, not talking about trying to strike a child to hurt it, but you're trying to get their attention. Maybe you smack their hand and say, no, I don't want you to burn your hand. Do not put your hand there on that hot, whatever that is, you know, the burner of the stove or whatever. Um, so we do things like that, and that's what God is talking about here. He's talking about these are penalties, these are punishments to try to get you to turn from those wrong ways and bring you back to the correct moral ways of following him. And also notice that God does not reject us. Even here he's saying, I will not reject them, nor will I so despise them as to destroy them. In other words, we can act in God's blessing and receive those blessings by being obedient and doing the right, correct, moral things. Or we can receive the punishment, the, the bad results of doing the wrong, immoral things. Yet, we can still repent and come back to God. He will not totally reject us or despise us or destroy us. Even back then, God is saying those things. He's just saying it differently. It's worded differently, but it's the same basic principles that the Lord talks about in the New Testament. So again, this has been Leviticus chapter 26. I want to thank you for listening. Hope you have a wonderful day. May the Lord bless you and keep you safe. And remember, God loves you.